Hello, welcome to my video. Today I'm going to show you how you can dual boot Windows 11 and Linux Mint. So we're going to do a manual partitioning, also keep that in mind. So we can do a lot more stuff with that method and there's a really, unless of course there's user error, there's a lot less uh, likely that the installation is just going to break your OS. So keep that in mind. So let's just get started uh, for starters we're just going to get this Wintoy program uh, so let's just go inside the downloads and we can just select either one of those three it's just going to get us into this website we're going to select the windows in this part of course you can use a different computer to uh, partition your USB drive but it doesn't really matter whatever so I already have it downloaded here so I'm not gonna download it again but that's how you download it then we're gonna grab the Linux Mint ISO so we're gonna go inside the downloads click on Mint here the recommended one in here there are different versions of Mint we're gonna see, uh, select the cinnamon version uh, of course if you have a low-end PC I do recommend the XFC edition so yeah let's just grab that you click on download and after that uh, you just gonna have to select the closest place that's uh, in this list to you so uh, like in which country you're in you're just gonna select that and uh, just so that you have faster download speeds there's no real difference in the uh, the ISO that you're going to get so keep that in mind so I already have it downloaded so I'm just gonna close the web browser from now because that's all we need so let's just get into our downloads I like to just uh, put them into my desktop the old programs that I need so let's just do that so for starters uh, we're gonna extract the files from this zip drive so just gonna do that click on extract all after you right click click on extract let it do its thing and there you go it opens it up the folder that's in it then let's just click on Wintoy and we're gonna before we start Wintoy this program we're gonna start uh, plug in your USB drive I already have it plugged in here uh, and don't forget to use a USB drive that it's at least 8 gigs that's like uh, I guess the minimum USB drive that you can buy today so I guess your all of your USB drives is bigger than that but just keep that in mind because the ISO is about like 3 gigs so you're just not gonna able to use it if it's just smaller like 3 gigs or something there is no 3 gig USB drive but you get it what I'm saying so let's just click yes to that so this application just starts up. Uh, we're just gonna click on install here. Uh, if you have safe, uh, secure boot and stuff, uh, just make sure you have this checked. And uh, we're not using a OS that uh, or own operating a computer that is running with safe boot. So we're not gonna see that. But if you do, there are guides for that too. I might make that guide myself as well if you have any problems with that so yeah there you go so that's done so now our USB drive is bootable so all we need to do is copy this ISO file to this window folder which is now our new USB drives name so I'm just gonna select that and click on paste we're just gonna just let it sit there okay just let it copy and we're just gonna leave it there then we're just gonna boot into it uh, before we boot into the ISO drive I do recommend doing the partitioning first on the Windows itself so that you just don't mess up your Windows installation later on uh, by just deleting your Windows partition and stuff so what you need to do here now before this finishes uh, is you're gonna go inside the disk management right clicking here and click on disk management 
So let that open up. We're just gonna split our Windows installation and uh, the newly created free space so that we can install Linux in the newly created space instead of the Windows installation just getting that wiped or something. So we're just gonna click on shrink volume here. Let that do its thing. Okay, so let's just give it like, is that 26 gigs? I think it is. Let me just see. Uh, of course, my current uh, VM has a lot less storage here. I just found it useless to just have an insanely large drive in my VM because there's no point. It's gonna be the exact same in your one terabyte drive and stuff, so there's no difference. Just don't uh, wipe these partitions, by the way. Keep these uh, sizes in mind. So this is 32 gig, 32, yeah. Uh, this is 100 megabytes, and you get the idea. Keep those in mind. We're going to install in the 25 gig uh, space. And just keep it unallocated, okay? It's not gonna show up in your Windows installation now. And it will not show up after this is finished, unless you do some extra trickery in your Windows installation. I did a video about that if you have like a ButterFS formatted Linux install, you can do that. But uh, we're gonna use the XT4 in this setup, so yeah. So I'm gonna let this finish. I will be back after this is fully copied. So as you can see, just finished transferring that file. So now we're just going to reboot. And while we're rebooting, we're gonna either click on the function keys or on the exit key. I recommend you just try pushing the exit key a couple of times. If that doesn't work, you can just try the function keys. There's just no problem of doing this. You just have to figure out which just uh, lets you see the like bootloader selector. Uh, after we see this menu, uh, we're gonna select the USB drive. Uh, if your USB drive has a name or something that shows up here. Uh, you could select that too. So we're gonna now uh, just click enter because we only have one USB drive. Then we're just gonna select normal mode again. And we're gonna let this boot up into the ISO so that we can actually start installing it. So of course, uh, in here, if you have an Nvidia driver, an Nvidia card, I sometimes if it doesn't boot up, you could use the compatibility mode, but since this is a VM, we don't have an NVIDIA card, so we're just gonna boot up into the normal mode. Uh, now, we're just booting up into a live environment. Uh, this environment is just going to basically let us install it. Of course, you could test this uh, Linux Mint install if it works or not for you. So as you can see, we got the Mint logo. If you uh, happen to see some issues on your boot up, just click on the exit key. It will just give you like a more detailed explanation of what's happening. As you can see, just like gives you some extra detail. Uh, if you don't understand it, you might like take a picture of it and share it with someone that actually could understand it. So it's just a good info to know, you know? So we just booted up into our Linux Mint installer. Uh, before we do that, I am gonna just change the resolution to a more readable one. Uh, I'm gonna get this uh, fractional scaling option turned on. It just basically lets you go to like a little bit more different sizes here. If your laptop supports this, or actually every laptop supports it, but if it just, your Linux Mint install looks weird, and just like maybe the icons are like too large or too small, just turn this on, it will fix everything. So as you can see, it just looks exactly like in Windows now. So let's just, let's just click on this install Linux Mint icon now, after we just resize it. Of course the resizing will most likely happen automatically if you're in a real computer. This is just a VM problem except the fractional scaling part. So let it just open.
Okay, now we can just select our uh, language and stuff. So then we're just gonna click on continue. I'm just gonna leave the English here. Okay, English US is okay for me. Uh, I do recommend you install multimedia codecs because like if you want to play some video files it could just cause some unexpected problems but you could do this I'm not sure if uh, this is still around but you can do this after you install it so keep that in mind if there was a problem there's just like an in here there is like a straight up program that you can launch that just automatically installs the codecs so there's no extra commands involved. If you just forget to check this box, you're still fine. Okay, let this sit again. In here, uh, instead of doing this, we're gonna do something else because just like I told you, we're gonna do a manual partitioning. It, it's actually I think has less risk involved since we know what we're doing uh, so let's see so in here uh, we're gonna select that empty space that we created so let's just find it it must have been 25 gigs because that's what we uh, did okay here free space 27 gigs so that's exactly what we're looking for. The size is, might differ a little bit since uh, Windows does use a different uh, calculation algorithm for that. But yet again, this is what we were looking for because it's a free space. So we're going to click plus sign in this. And uh, you could do like a 1 gig to like uh, 100 megabytes. We're going to do an UFI partition. I'm just gonna try uh, do 300 megs. Uh, then we're gonna select the EFI partition in the selection. What the? Okay, the menu just. Oh, I then able to click it. Okay, and select this EFI partition section. Okay. After that, just click on OK. So this is our boot uh, section for our Linux. If that makes sense, that's exactly what we're doing. And then we're going to create the whole OS's partition. So there are going to be two partitions that we're making. Keep that in mind. So after that, uh, we're going to select. Oh, and also don't mistake this part of something because that is our USB drive. Uh, pay attention to this SDA part. Like this is SDB1. This is SDA. So SDA is our uh, internal drive while this is our USB drive keep that in mind because that could really mess up stuff so uh, let's see what happens okay after that uh, so just pay attention that this is the EFI system partition uh, okay so we're gonna select that from the list here and there it is so that is going to install the bootloader here after that we're going to select the free space here click on plus sign and in here in the map point just get the slash icon here and you're good to go here we're going to have the home partition and root in the same section we're not gonna have it different so yeah that's what we're gonna do and after that I think is everything is done let me see it looks good so let's see if it boots or not <laughs> uh, of course we're sure that as you can see it just gets the EF ESP which is our boot and this is our ex24 this is the uh, where we're gonna install the Linux Mint install, so looks good. Okay, let's select our location, let's continue. Uh, you can just do this. Let's get a really secure password. Uh, if you are cautious about your home folder, you can encrypt it if you want. 
I'm gonna skip that because that will take more time in NVM that's not necessary right now okay you can look through this page if you want now let this sit uh, you could just get this verbose option enabled as well to see a little bit more detail so yeah we're gonna let this sit and let uh, after that is finished we're gonna see if it's we can boot up into our Linux Mint installed and after that we're gonna test if our Windows 11 is still intact and I guess I'm gonna end the video there So as you can see now it's finished so we're just gonna click on restart now so that we can actually see if everything go as we planned so we're gonna click enter now okay it's doing its thing and as you can see we have the Windows Boot Manager here and the MX Linux option. So let's first start to see how the Linux Mint. Oh, I, my mistake. Uh, Linux Mint. I said MX Linux. Uh, so let's see. I'm just getting the more detailed view. Okay. So let's just enter our password that is super secure by the way okay and as you can see it just booted up let me just get the screen size correctly again and there So, as you can see, it looks like everything is working. Uh, I do recommend doing all these first steps that just gives you here. Mm, yeah, like doing the update from here at the bottom. So, yeah, you would all do all of those after that. I might do like a first steps after installing a Linux Mint video as well. But yeah, it uh, looks like everything is working let's reboot into the Windows install and see if that's also working or we just completely wiped it <laughs> okay are we able to do it oh, wait there and as you can see we're booting up into Windows as well so I think everything just worked perfectly fine here. Let's actually boot up into it completely though to make sure that there's not like a blue screen or anything. So as you can see we just boot up into our Windows install. So I guess that wraps up the video here. So. Yeah, thanks for watching.